Okay, we just looked at the formulas that you're going to use for finding equivalent polar coordinates, so now let's go ahead and apply that with uh, this example. So here are the different, three different conditions that they're going to give you, and uh, problems usually you'll see in the text usually have these same uh, similar ones as well. We're given 5 and 300 degrees, and we want to find an equivalent point. In other words, we want to find a point that allows us to arrive at the same spot as that one, but we have these characteristics. The first one says that we've got to have a negative angle, and our value needs to be positive. This one, the angle's got to be between 0 and 360, but your R's got to be negative. And this one, R is positive, but we, our angle needs to be between 360 and 720. So all three of these points we come up with, all of them, if we plot them, should take us back to the same spot as this. So it probably would make sense to first make a quick sketch of this one here, 5 and 300, so that way we can check our answers to see if we arrive at the same spot that we started from. So let's do that on here. Uh, 300 degrees is going to be this one here. So this we go around here, 300 degrees. We count 5 down and it puts us in the uh, fourth quadrant. So every one of our answers here should take us back to the original point that we had before. So let's do that for each of these. The first one, okay, it says my R needs to be greater than zero. Now those formulas I, I had in the previous video um, show that you're going, you need, you need to, if you're not changing the sign of the R, you're going to work with 360. So anytime, if you're not changing the sign of the R, you're going to add or subtract 360. If you do want to change the sign of the R, you want to add or subtract 180. That's basically how the formulas work. This one is already positive. I don't want to change the sign of the R. So therefore, I'm going to do 5. I'm going to keep that the same. And then for the 300, I can choose to either add or subtract 360. So again, I'm not changing the sign of the R. That's why I'm using 360 and not uh, 180. Well, let's suppose I add 360 to it. Well, that's not going to be right because my angle will not end up as a negative angle. I want to get a negative angle out of it, so I'm going to choose to subtract. You have a choice to either add or subtract 360. You look at the condition, that's going to tell you which one of those you want to use. So in this case, we want to subtract 360 from it because we want to end up with a negative angle as a result. We want to end up getting that, meeting that condition. So our answer is going to be 5 and negative 60 degrees. Let's see if that makes sense with our picture here. Now instead of going clockwise, going around counterclockwise rather, I need to go clockwise because of the negative angle. I would go down here 60 degrees. That would take me to the same line there. I would count down five spaces and there we go. We, we end up at the same spot that we started from. So this is considered an equivalent polar coordinate because it allows us to arrive at the same spot when we graphed it. Let's now do this one. Okay, now this one, the R has to be negative. So I did change the sign of the R. It was originally positive and now I'm turning it into a negative. So because of that, I need to add or subtract 180 uh, from the 300 degrees. So I'm starting with 300 and I need to choose to either add or subtract 180. I don't want to add 180 because then I'll get something that's more than 360. I want to choose to subtract 180 to allow me to get something between 0 and 360. So I'm going to subtract 180 from it there. So now when I do that, I get negative 5 and I'll get 120 degrees. Let's see if that one makes sense. So here, I would start by going to 120, but because I have a negative angle, I would make that a dotted line. So I go this way, 120, reverse it 180 degrees in the other direction, and again, we still arrive at the same spot. So that means this is also correct. This is also an equivalent point. Now, the last one, we want our theta to be between 360 and 720, and then the R has to be greater than zero. Now, my R originally was already positive. So whenever you're, if you're not changing the sign of the R, the formula you're going to use is one with 360. We're going to choose to either add or subtract 360. Definitely this time, we want to add 360 because I want that angle to end up between 360 and 720. So I'm going to do 300 plus 360. And if I do that, it gives me 5 and 660. 
So let's see if that makes sense. So what I would do is I would go around the 300 to here, but then I would go ahead and I would add another 360 to it and that would take me down to here. And yes, that would actually be correct. That would allow me to arrive at the same spot. So going around 300 and another 360 would take me to the same spot. So yeah, that would be uh, correct here. So, um, so basically now what I've done is I've found equivalent points for all three of those. All three of those points allow me to arrive back uh, at the same spot that it originally is. So again, it's always good to make a sketch with it because that way you can check your answers uh, to see if they really are equivalent points. You should always be able to take you back to the same place you started with.